Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for this luxury beauty haul. If you'd like to see that, please keep watching. So those of you who joined me for a vlog, like two vlogs ago, or three vlogs ago, something like that, I did some unboxing, so you may have seen some of these items, but I'm swatching them for you today and giving you a little bit more of a closer look. And I also have additional items that I have not featured yet. So let's go ahead and get started with Charlotte Tilbury. Now, I did not pick up any of the new items, but I am really interested in their permanent collection. I do the One Eye, One Cheek, One Lip series with Chanel, which I know many people love, and I really enjoyed that too because then I can feature things that are, again, in the permanent collection. They're not limited edition typically. So that also helps me build my capacity in terms of being able to compare existing products with, say, things that are limited edition. So. Starting with this palette, I am so into cool eyeshadow palettes these days, and this one's right up my alley. It's got a little bit of warmth here with these two. We've got two beautiful shades, the primer and the enhance, which have a little bit of glow to them. We've got a matte color, the smoke color, and then the pop shade and I actually have that on today and the pop shade is not nearly as sparkly as I thought it would be so it might be let me just take a look at it again it might be one that would actually incorporate more often so lovely palette if you'd like to see this look I just filmed it it will be my Chantecaille no Chantecaille <laughs> my Charlotte Tilbury one eye one cheek one lip I don't think I have any Chantecaille this time that's like a first that I don't have anything in here then we've got this blush. I love Charlotte Tilbury blushes. They are amongst my favorite, and I've been wanting to try other shades. I think I have a few, maybe three or four, but this one is in Love Glow, and it looks like it's too light for me, and you can see, though, it does definitely show up more of a subtle glow. Really beautiful, though, so picked that up, and I think the swatch is probably going to look very faint, but I think in this case, it's on the cheek, it looks different than the swatch. And then we've got one lip, and this is the one that I was a little bit surprised at because I don't think I actually meant to pick this one, but once I saw it together with this, I'm glad I did. It's a beautiful bright color, and the close-up on this is not going to be as pretty. Usually I'll film close-ups before I use the products so that they look nice, so this is a little bit, um, not as brand new, uh, because I used it for this look today. It's an electric poppy. Definitely looks brighter here than it does on. So that's actually something I was happy about. I thought this would be fluorescent because I think I picked a Gucci shade once that didn't work for me and it reminded me of this. I think maybe that's another reason why I was a little apprehensive about this because it reminded me of the shade that didn't work. But in this case, I think it worked really well. I also picked up this lip shade from Sizzly. I love, and I can't remember ever the name of it, it's the Miami one, it's like a beautiful warm red. And I was looking at the shades, really difficult to find swatches, I think, of these. I don't know, I had a hard time. So looking at them just compared to each other too, just looking at the actual lipsticks was difficult to compare as well. So I just went with a name that I liked, <laughs> and it was Capri. I love the Isle of Capri, if you've ever been there. It's the most beautiful place. We dream of going back there again sometime in the near future. Um, but this is in 43 Rouge Capri, and it's a very serious looking lip, which doesn't make me think of Capri at all. This makes me think of more like, I don't know, New York, this color, something definitely more serious. Doesn't actually convey Capri to me, but we're gonna try this with something. Not quite sure what, actually, maybe it would be pretty with something like this eye. I'll have to figure out how to use this one, but I love the formula. I don't necessarily love this packaging, but I love their lipstick formula. Then this came, I purchased this, and I just wanted to show this to you close up with some beautiful lighting. Like you can see the metallic in there just glowing. So I'll get a nice close up for you as well. But this is by House of Oud. It's in the scent Cypress Shade. And this is the one that I just fell in love with the notes. I ordered it immediately, which is something I never do, especially with fragrance. And I'm just looking up the notes here to make sure I can describe it accurately accurately for you. So the notes are aromatic, floral, and woody, which is exactly what I love. Lemon, bergamot, mandarin at the top, heart notes, petit, grommosa, coriander, and mint. And then for the base, cedarwood from Madagascar, vetiver, and then an oud. So yeah, 
just a stunning bottle. I just can't get over how pretty this is. And then this, if you saw the unboxing, you know that this is where the fragrance is housed. So if you're looking for something very unique in terms of presentation as well as the fragrance. So it does have some seriousness about it. It reminds me a little bit again of you or someone like you, but that's a very easy to wear fragrance. It's very daytime. This is a little bit more intricate than that, a little bit more interesting, a little bit more sophisticated than that as well. But I just think this is stunning. I'm really excited about this brand. I've never heard of them before either, but I mean, even if you just had this as decor, that is stunning. The fragrance is really beautiful as well. And then I forgot to include this in my last haul. This is the 111 or 111 Skin uh, Harley Street London. It's the Rose Gold Brightening Facial Treatment Mask. And I purchased the box. And inside there are, I think, five? Uh, what does it say? Why doesn't it say on the box? Like, I think I had this trouble when I was trying to order it because I didn't know how many were in here. I think there are five because I've used two already. But the reason I picked this up, it's a little bit pricey, I think, for face masks, especially for someone who doesn't usually use face masks. But I saw really beautiful results with it and I'm trying to open it so you can see one. Yeah, based on the results I was getting, I knew that I would definitely use them all. So it says here, the advanced structure of the 111 Skin Hydrogel Mask enhances absorption, absorption of moisture to create a protective barrier that keeps skin perfectly hydrated. The Hydrogel Mask in combination with the 24 karat gold and damask rose extract works in powerful synergy to brighten firm and optimize moisture levels. So I definitely see a brightening effect with this mask, which was the purpose for me. Um, hydration is nice, but I really like the brightening effect. So this one delivers. If I ever see this one come up on a promo or something like, something like that, I'll make sure to post it in the community tab so that you can give it a try in case you wanted to at a discounted price. I waited until I found a discount on this because I knew it would at some point. I just needed to be patient. Oh, speaking of brightening, I picked up this product because Dr. Lee talked about it and they said they really liked the ingredient deck in here. So it has kojic acid, tranexamic acid, melatonin, niacinamide, licorice root, and azelaic acid. I've heard all of those ingredients in terms of brightening and um, fading dark spots or discoloration. So I thought I'd give it a try. So I've been using it and it actually says, um, use once a week to start and work your way up to daily use. Sun protection, uh, make sure to use sun protection during the day, which is what I always do. It says here, fade the look of your most stubborn marks, scars, and spots. The serum is packed with purposeful actives that let you kick back and let your worries fade away. <laughs> so I am already giving this a try. I've only used it a couple days though, but excited to see results and I will keep you posted. Oh, and then Refer sent over some lovely brushes. So thank you so much Refer. Again, if you saw the unboxing, you'll see these in a better close-up because it's kind of fuzzy. I didn't realize the footage was so fuzzy, but we have the number 22 which I think some of you said was out of stock for a while. A lot of you know much more about these brushes than I do, so please let me know how to best use them and how they've worked for you. I would love to know. And then we have the number five brush. We have the number four brush. I feel like I'm late to the game with this brand, but I've heard so much about them and I really think they have such an innovative concept. So let's take a look. We've got a number one here a number two brush, and then we have a number three. And they just feel really soft. Like that's my first thing that I noticed about them. So in terms of performance, I still have to try them. You can see they're brand new. I still wanna take some lovely photos of them first, but they just feel so, so soft. So thank you so much, Refer, for sending those over. And they come in this little um, brush holder. Actually, that reminds me, I've never shown you this. This is from one of my favorite people. This is from one of my favorite people who made this for me. I don't know if you can see it, but it says Everyday Edit here, as well as has the um, logo here. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. Let me put it in front of my face. But this is what it looks like. How cute is that? This is a one-off that was made just for me. 
Um, but I do keep most frequently used brushes and eyeliners in there. So that's always sitting right here. So this refer container will just sit right next to it. And they also sent over an eyelash curler with the replacement pads. So I'm excited to give that a try. I've kind of phased out of using uh, eyelash curlers, but I'll definitely try this, give you my feedback. I love the Surat one, that's my favorite one, even above the Shuomura. So we'll see how this compares. Then if you didn't already catch the video, I picked up all four new Victoria Beckham posh lipsticks. I've never tried the formula before because I didn't really like any of the shades before, but when I saw all four of these pop up, they looked like really interesting possibilities for me, and I thought that I probably actually wear these quite a bit. So let me just take the lids off. I have a dedicated, did I say that? I have a dedicated video. I do try these all on in that video in case you're interested. But I have the shade Fire, which is a beautiful bright shade, not too overwhelming. And then we've got the shade Twist, the shade Spark, and then we have the shade Jump. So if you don't wanna see that video, I'm gonna say probably the one I would use the most just because it's closest to my lip shade is Spark. So make sure to head over though if you do wanna see all of these on. Lovely formula though, I was surprised at the longevity because I noticed that after a while and after I'd eaten, there was still some color left behind. So I don't know if it's touted as a long wear, I don't know, um, but it did have a a staying power to it that I was surprised about. Really hydrating, nice and creamy, lovely formula. Got a few things from Chanel. I picked up the color corrector in Pesh, the new one. I did a video where I featured this um, just with powder because I kind of wanted it just for that, like a one and done concealer color corrector and then some powder. So I applied it like that in a vlog. So I'm not trying to think, I think it just went up. Yeah, I think it just went up right before this one. So this is the new formulation. I also picked up BD31, but I believe this is going back because it's too light for me. But I'll swatch it for you here in case you were interested in the shade. But it's a little too warm and a little too light for me. I prefer this shade for concealer and for spot concealing. So it also looks like the ingredient deck is exactly the same. So I'll confirm with Margaret just to make sure, but I think, I mean, if that's the case, then I probably only need this one pesh. So the class I took, it was the uh, Le Cour Iconique class, and it was just the basics of the Chanel look, which is a fresh, even complexion, nothing too heavy in terms of coverage. Um, you can definitely see the skin, the way they were showing application they used. Actually, the person, Teresa, I think her name was, used the Le Beige Healthy Glow which is something that I love and I'm glad she used it. Sometimes I forget I have that. And then just a little bit of concealer, but I did want to point out this lovely lip shade. So this is a deluxe sample of number 58 Rouge V in the Rouge Allure Velvet. And this is such a beautiful, it doesn't look red to me, but they called it a red. Um, and I can see that it's a very classic shade, a lovely mix that I think can go with both cool and warm, which is what I think makes this so unique. So I love this and I would definitely purchase a full size. That's how much I think this is a classic shade that will work with so many eye looks and cheek colors as well. So thank you Chanel for sending those little samples over. It was such a fun class. And then I purchased some Eric Javits hats, three to be specific. Oh yeah, and a super random thing here. Let me just to do this. So I purchased this one, which I already have, and I don't even think it's gonna fit in the frame. It's the one that has the um, ribbons on it, on the side, which you can tie, which I did in Hawaii, and I'm so glad because it was so windy, my hat would have flown away. It's UPF 50 plus, has a little bow in the back. So I purchased that, um, they were on sale, so that's why I purchased them. And then this one is the um, squishy hat. Again, UPF 50. You can pack this. You want to stuff um, some like clothing in there though to keep the shape as you pack it. I personally don't really pack this one though. I will usually just carry it. Um, it's the same style as this other one that I have. This is the second one that I've had in this style. Oh, it's a little smushed. 
Um, but this is the one that I have, and here's the peanut colored one. So this one has the black, this is actually easier to find. This combination is a little bit trickier to find, the, this one. So I think I wore this in the vlog too, but it's really very classic. It feels heavier than this one though. I don't know why. I'll see if I can find this one for you. It's not sitting correctly because I have a clip in my hair right now, but there, is that better? I don't know. I feel like it. in my vlog it looks better because it's not seated so high. Although these are hats, I consider them skincare almost because they protect my skin. And then this is so fun, this visor, which I think is the best packing hat because it's got Velcro, it's got the EJ for Eric Javits. Also UPF 50, but you can roll this one up like this. So this really does pack quite compactly. You could probably make that even tighter if you wanted to. And it has this, my hair's a mess, isn't it? Um, it has this here so that your makeup doesn't get all over the hat. So let me see, I feel like this frame is so small. So here's what it looks like. So this part touches your forehead like this so that you can Actually, let me show you. Here's how it looks on. And now I can't see you. Okay, this is how it looks on. So it's quite wide on the brim. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, the last thing I got is kind of interesting. It's a portable fan though. I got this off Amazon because it's just been so hot and I feel like it would be nice to be able to go outside and just have a little bit of your own air conditioning. It's not exactly air conditioning. So I've seen lots of versions of this, but I like this because the vents go all the way around to the backs. I've seen with some, some where it just stops. So you charge it here and then there's a power button. You can hear the fan. Here, I'll put it close to the microphone. It's not very loud, which is nice as well. So it just provides your own little like fan. I think it's so <laughs> innovative. I don't know, maybe I'm late to the game here but I have yet to actually wear it. But I like it also for, um, and I don't know if it's gonna work, but for like insects when we go for a walk, because I know they don't like the wind. So I'm gonna see if that helps, I don't know. But it is definitely a nice portable fan. If you were ever wanting one, I think it's such a good idea. So I'll let you know how much I use it though. I'll leave a link to this specific one because there were so many. Oh, look, a different speed, I didn't even know. <gasps> wow, Let's see, you can see my hair, right? That's the fan moving it, let's see. Let me see if I can put it here and you can see how powerful, that's how powerful the wind is. It's blowing my hair back. Oh wow, is that it? Yeah, that's it, okay, it's got like a few speeds. <laughs> So there's this as well, just a random thing. And that's it for my haul. Let me know what you would like to see. I feel like there's a little bit of a lull in releases right now. So like I said, I love permanent collections. Let me know what you'd like to see or if there's something new, because typically you know more than I do about what's coming down the pipe in terms of releases. Let me know what you're interested in. It interested in i'll be happy to pick it up but that's it for today's video so please take care of each other stay well if you enjoyed this video if you learned something please give it a thumbs up subscribe and i will see you next time